What's up, Gary S? It's Cos with Midnight Lights Gaming, bringing you my ultimate tips, tricks, and what you missed in Far Cry 6 video. This is a very ambitious video. I'm excited to bring it to you because I've had so much fun playing this game, and it's just got more fun the more I've learned, the more nuances I've found, and the more I've dug into things they don't necessarily explain to you. So what you're going to see is over a hundred tips, tricks, and things you might have missed, and I'm breaking it down into... Um, different sections. So use the chapters at the bottom to go where you want to go and choose your own adventure a little bit here. But I'm going to start with story and settings, tips and tricks, and then move into combat, particularly how to have more style in your combat, as well as exploring and collecting tips, talking about customizing our cards and making sure people understand that. And then I'm going to give you some tips on constructing your camp, as well as hunting and fishing. So let's get into it. As promised, we're starting with tips, tricks, and things you might have missed with story and settings. So the first one is just advance the story early. I'm someone who loves to explore and just get all of the loot I can, but I have to unlearn that and I have to remember to advance the story early so I can get weapons, some character development, and kind of get my groundings a little bit. I really encourage you to do the same. Next is play as female Danny, not just because the future is feminine, but she is such a great voice actress. Um, she plays the character so well at times. I think she upstages Anton Castillo even a little bit. XP in Far Cry 6 helps get you access to better everything. So just want you to know it's good to prioritize supply drops. It's good to prioritize yarn stories. And it's good to prioritize military targets. Those tend to be 200 to 300, whereas some story missions are only 150. So if you really need XP, prioritize those things. Next, your HUD is all the busyness on your screen, your ammo, the map, all of that stuff. So this game's really great because it allows you to have all of that stuff on or to get all of that stuff off of your HUD. It also allows you to create a custom HUD. And so that's what I did. I would use all on or custom. And when I did custom, the only things I really focused on were the blinking objects, blinking interactive objects, because then you can see objects through walls. It just makes everything a lot easier. You're not running around chasing stuff. And also that enemy tag icons, which will make it so the only thing you see while you're running around is if uh, you've tagged an enemy, you can see them as like their red outline through walls. And that creates this really fun kind of challenging immersive experience. So I use the custom when I go into combat or when I know I'm going to combat and all the rest of the time I have everything on because of course the map's great to have. And um, so let me show you those specifically the difference so you get a sense of it. So this is my custom HUD where I only have enemy tag highlight. That's the only thing. So you can see I tagged these enemies and all of I mean is I scouted them with my camera before this video. And so I can see them as red through walls, but that's the only thing on the screen. It's so immersive and intense, I love it. And then you can see what combat looks like with all of it on, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just so busy. There's so much crap on the screen that I find it's not as fun, it's not as immersive, and the combat is just less intense when I have all this stuff on here. I know when I'm hurting, I have a general sense of my ammo. I have a general sense of, of like when I'm out of C4, I need to get my next um, item, you know, my next throwable item. So anyway, I hope that helps. Next is your palette your way. So this game also lets you really customize a lot of colors. It's some of that's for accessibility and this game does a great job with accessibility, but some of it is just, you get to do what you want to do. Like an enemy outline color I played around with was neon yellow for a while. I did like a bunch of different neon colors cause that's just my game. That's what I love, but also just to play around with it and have a bit of fun. So you can really have it your way. Next, here's my go-to build out. This is like my pretty much all of the time build out unless there's some specific thing taking me away from it or cause I was just experimenting and playing around. But there's so much customization in this game. It's kind of a headache. So I wanted to show you something that was good no matter what the circumstance, starting with my Furioso Supremo cause that thrust jump is amazing and it's effective. A high powered silenced automatic rifle with 
armor piercing rounds gotta have armor piercing rounds in this game to get one shot headshot kills regardless of enemy i also use a bow and arrow for style stealth and good range and then a suppressed sniper rifle with armor piercing bullets for long range shots i also have armor piercing bullets in my suppressed pistol and all of my guns have improved weapon damage when aiming down the sights i aim down the sights almost all the time for all my kills and I just wanted to maximize damage as much as humanly possible because I didn't get the headshot then it was good to have more damage so I like that you can see as far as my gear goes I use the headgear the parkour headgear because it helps with stamina and then for my like top and bottom I typically did the tech gear because it helped with being more stealthy and then I love the parkour kicks because it improves move speed I'm like try to be stealthy and super mobile obviously so in terms of gloves that I liked I uh, sometimes use the parkour strap if I was running around because it improves speed while weapons are holstered I also like the dark tech gloves because it auto aims knives and throwing axes which is really cool and then yeah disrespect or the prisoners wrap is when you do a machete kill you can use their secondary weapon or a knife to kill them and then the pin puller as well which is during a machete kill you can uh, pull the pin on their grenade and then kick them towards another enemy which is incredibly satisfying so those are the gloves I like to use the gear and my sort of default build out for any situation I might encounter that's that one moving on to customize your appearance where you can make any gear look like any other gear of the same type by clicking on that eye icon in the lower left hand part of your screen so you can see here i kind of like these sort of blue gloves they're kind of in my style so i would go to gloves that don't look like that go to that appearance icon and i could make them look like that while maintaining the perks of the glove that looked different. So you can also customize the appearance of weapons by clicking on the same icon in the lower left hand corner. And you can unlock sort of new looks for your gun with spray cans which are found throughout the world. So that was kind of cool, really making things look the way you want them. Next tip, I think all headgear looks like crap. So just know you can toggle your headgear off and still maintain all of the benefits of it by pressing L3 on like sort of the main arsenal page. All right, we're cruising. Next is fun with photo mode, which can be found in the system part of your pause menu. And yeah, it's a beautiful game. You can take a lot of beautiful shots and post them online, which is what I really enjoy doing. You can kind of see what an end one looks like. There's also a live mode, so you can go out of uh, first person and into this sort of live mode, which I got some of the Maximus concerts. You can also get some of your like funniest moments like I did here in photo mode, so definitely use that. I'm not gonna give like a go get this weapon and do this mission to get this Supremo. Like, I hope you explore and have a lot of fun. Triada Blessings is my one exception. The Amigo you get from this as well as the gear is like pretty game altering. So I'd encourage you to do Triada Blessings pretty early. All right, first section done. Booyah, on to combat and style. Practical tips for combat, as well as some tips to just like help you look good, help with your style, help with like just being a badass during combat. So we're gonna start with how there's no technical skill tree in Far Cry 6. You kind of start out with some skills you've had to work for or use experience points or like pelts and stuff in past Far Cry's like Death From Above, like you can see here, or Death From Below, or even Chain Assassination. Which isn't to say there aren't skills still being acquired, it's just, done differently in Far Cry 6 than in past games and a lot of other games. And after Assassin's Creed Valhalla's skill tree, I'm not mad about it. So one of the ways that we get skills is through outfits. So like, for example, this these gloves, you can automatically aim your knives and axes, um, or you kind of have this one where after a machete kill, you can chain assassinate with your uh, soldado sidearm. So those are skills. They're just wrapped into gear, which of course you find throughout the game and upgrade or you can buy. So that's how the skill tree is playing out as well as within our Supremos. So within our Supremos, we have opportunities for new skills associated with the Supremos, but also with the mod. So each mod provides an opportunity for some kind of skill that could be more Supremo sort of fuel from headshots, or I use the silent uh, stealthy mod for all of my um, 
Supremos, and, and that really helps me a lot. Gadget sockets are now just attached to Supremos for whatever reason I don't exactly understand, but this is our, your C4, your mines, etc., and it's really important to kind of, again, align these with your game plan or your particular Supremo. That's kind of my tip around gadget sockets. Next is healing. A lot of people have had questions about uh, because in last Far Cries you could kind of heal with a shot or with meds. So that's just a socket upgrade on your Supremo now. But honestly, I've never used it. I'm more of the heal with pain kind of person. Um, and I think the stealth gameplay deals with this a lot. But yeah, I just use Triangle on PlayStation 5 and have never used the medication and haven't needed to. So next, you also get skills with camp upgrades, which I'll talk more about down the road. But essentially things like your wingsuit or certain buffs from cooking those kinds of skills are now part of camp upgrades so next i want to move into scouting starting with camera scouting which is up on the d-pad and it's a great way to scout get to some high ground see where your enemies are at make a game plan i'm a huge fan of scouting so i'm gonna talk a little bit about it when you're scouting it's also really good to look for points of entry so where can I enter? You can see kind of on the left and right, there's tall grass that you can kind of stealth into, or you can go loud over the bridge right in front of you. You just kind of want to make a plan, and your scouting is going to be a big part of that. You can also camera scout wall parachuting. So mm -hmm. as you parachute down, you can kind of get a sense of where people are, which I didn't know till a little later in the game. I also love these scouting grenades, so I carry with them me all the time. It just saves a ton of time. Um, so I would recommend bringing those with you, seeing and knowing where your enemies are makes for way more fun, way more stylish combat, and you're probably just not going to die as much, which is also satisfying. There's one other way I like to scout, and that's computer scouting. When you upgrade your hideout network at your camp far enough, you'll have these computers pop up, and you'll see them from the icon when you approach a military target. And when you do and you use the computer, at first it will show you some basic stuff like alarms and cameras. But the more you advance it, the more you'll see soldados starting out with like VIPs and then more soldados. So um, scouting is so important. It's often overlooked. I really encourage it. Next, when you're scouting, you want to look out for tanks, turret guns, and choppers. Just because it's really cool to take out half of a base and then get in a chopper or a tank and take out the rest. It's just full on the best of badass as far as i'm concerned especially if you're going to go loud next is games are doing a better and better job of this where you're kind of in cover you have options to lean out um, in this you press l2 and kind of lean that way or um, you can also peek where you get to the top where you're hanging from a ledge and you can press l2 and up and peek to see more enemies and it's just a good way because there are big buffs enemies often don't see you when you're doing that next of course you want to shoot out or use M emp otherwise emps to uh, that could be grenades or mines or whatever to get rid of cameras and alarms so just another way to do that some alarms can't be shot which you'll probably notice pretty early on which i think is new to far cry 6 put in the comments if i'm wrong about that i feel like you could shoot out other alarms, but these are like protected. Also know that alarms and cameras are connected. So I'm going to disable this alarm and you'll see that the camera right nearby also gets uh, disconnected, which is kind of cool. I appreciate that kind of addition, the camera addition to this game and the disarming connection there. So also there's like quite a while you can be on camera and still not have the alarms go off. But if you get on a camera long enough, it will trigger an alarm. Next is you kind of have these main security panels now, which are new, where if you find it and disarm it, it gets rid of all the security in the entire military target. Another neat thing is that when you come up on a trip wire, as so long as you're not sprinting, that little grenade icon will pop up and you can disarm trip wires, which is great too. We're gonna move on now to Juan's rule nine, which is right tools for the right job and how each enemy has a weakness to different ammo types. So you can see on here that certain enemies are weak to soft body rounds. And then the next row is armor piercing rounds, then incendiary rounds, poison rounds, and then explosive rounds for vehicles. Now, this is kind of a cool idea in practice. The problem is that if you have soft body rounds and your 
shooting the head of a uh, soldado who's only weak to armor piercing rounds you're gonna have to empty your clip and that might not even do anything even these explosive rounds into armor piercing soldados 20 rounds and sometimes they're still not dead it's it, the execution of this has not been great so we need to talk about it the first thing it's still good to kind of know when you're scouting who's out there like if everyone's soft target rounds then yeah you may be in good shape or if you have a lot of guys with flamethrowers then it's not going to hurt you to um, use some poison rounds you know that'll create a lot of fire a lot of chaos which might be good so scouting still helps it's still good to kind of know what your soldados are are weak against and have a general understanding of that but at the end of the day you just really got to have armor piercing rounds that way any headshot is going to typically be one shot one kill so armor piercing rounds was my go-to i sometimes had uh, some soft body rounds too but very rarely honestly it was mostly armor piercing and then when I was playing around or trying to just create chaos, I might do poison or incendiary rounds. And then I always have one gun I could get to at some point that had the explosive rounds in case I needed to take down a chopper. And that was really the only option I had. Really what you want to do in my next thing is just prioritize damage and velocity. Get those things as high as you can and figure that out. That's going to have an impact. If you have good velocity and good damage on shotguns and some of these rifles, you're going to get one-time headshot kills. And that brings us to our next one, which is heads up. So, so long as you've got armor piercing and you're good at headshots, you're going to be great at Far Cry 6. Once you start messing around with different rounds, you might find that you can unload a clip into someone's head and they still won't be dead. So armor piercing and being rounds and great at headshots will go a very long way. But don't worry too much at the end of the day you have all of your weapons and all of your supremos on you all the time so if you got to pull out a rocket launcher or change your supremo to an emp the vault you can do that anytime but if you want to change a gadget out if you want to change a particular weapons bullet type you've got to do that stuff at a workbench so you can't do everything while you're running around and that leads me to my next one, which is what I ended up doing was building some themed build outs around Supremos so that I did kind of have the right tools for the right job. And that started with the utilitarian Supremo build out, which is really the right tool for any job, which it was my Furioso Supremo to help the, with the traversal and the thrust jumping. Um, and then yeah, you could you have you see some stuff on there. I, I always have C4. Um, I have those scouting grenades, stuff like that. And then I had a loud supremo, which was the exterminator, so I could shoot rockets off my back. A ton of explosives in my gadget mods. Always trying to bring an EMP with me as well. And then mods that weren't so concerned about being stealthy, but carrying more grenades and just being able to blow shit up all the time. Next, I use the vault. For, or Volta for my stealth supremo and that had axes and uh, flashbangs and uh, stealth grenade as well and then I think the bait can be good too. There is a better stealth supremo you can get a little later on but the headline of this story is that instead of trying to worry about customizing everything for every job I found that if I created the utilitarian, the loud, and the stealth themes with my Supremos and built from there, then I kind of was able to flow better and didn't spend so much time in the pause menu. Next is, remember you can shop for Resolver, not just with one on that island, but anytime you see that sort of grocery cart icon, you can um, talk to one of Juan's arms dealers and buy Resolver weapons. You can also buy gear. Just remember that gear is out in the world too. So I would say don't waste pesos on it. Uh, but a lot of people do and that's cool. I get it. Exploring all the time can be a lot. I think one of the best tips I can give and your way or the highway is all about two things. One, playing around with all the different weapons and having fun with them. And then the second thing is really figuring out a way you love to play and then building around that. And that will bring a lot of fun to your combat, but you still have to be ready for anything. Whatever comes up, you have to have a gun somewhere in your arsenal, not necessarily in your weapon wheel, but somewhere in your arsenal 
to deal with a helicopter or you a tank you have to have emps ready you have to have explosive rounds potentially ready if that's how you're dealing with helicopters so while you kind of want to create a style of playing and work from there and experiment and have fun you still want to leave with some weapon in your entire arsenal ready if a helicopter comes out or there's a lot of people with soft body rounds or um, you all like I said you always need to have armor piercing rounds ready to go so create a style have fun with it experiment but you still got to be ready for anything next is rate yourself so you can uh, change the rate of fire on several of your rifles and submachine guns so I just kind of want to show you that here where that's fully automatic or no that was a burst this is single shot and then you also have fully automatic now this is sort of an underappreciated aspect of games and gaming as far as our weapons go because each one of these serves a, a really great purpose and I find with some machine guns it's actually really fun to mess with it so you're going to see me go through the same sort of artillery spot with the three different rounds. So burst rate and my tips around this is it's I, I prefer full auto to it. It's kind of similar in some ways. But typically, if you are aiming around the head with a burst shot, you're not going to have a ton of recoil all over the place. It's going to send three shots real quick. So if you're anywhere around a headshot, it can be good. Single shot is better for um, kind of stay in stealth having some distance between you and the soldado and yeah almost like playing a mid-range sniper because of course you're not going to have any kick because you're only firing one round so um, that goes a long way you can see here i'm in the tall grass they can't find me i sent three or four single shots their way before i got that headshot so it's cool if you kind of want to stealth out and shoot from a little a mid to further range away now full auto is again really good if you're kind of moving around a lot going from one soldado to the next getting those headshots but also knowing when you get close range you can really uh, go at them with full auto moving right along hijacking is really cool and a lot of fun you can walk up along someone on a horse press r3 and hijack them right off that horse you can also hijack by pulling up alongside a vehicle in another vehicle and hijack uh, while a vehicle is moving which is incredibly satisfying Another cool hijack thing is you can hijack a tank. You just got to um, knock it out with an EMP first. So that could be your Volta Supremo. That could be an EMP grenade or an EMP mine. And once you do that, you just get up on the tank and press R3. Again, I know some of these may be obvious, but I want to make sure I run through them for maybe folks who haven't played or are thinking about playing. Next is you can also destroy tanks. I honestly, I've got to be close to 60 or 70 hours and I just found this out. Um, which is really helpful. Sometimes you just don't want a tank around or an enemy to get up to a tank. So you knock it out and you go up there and follow the prompt to cram a grenade down the hatchet. In PS5, I know it's R1. Next is Tank Joyride. This is pressing L3 like with any ground vehicle to auto drive. And when you do it with the tank, you can kind of turn around, blow up Soldado vehicles propaganda it earns you a ton of experience points it's also just kind of fun and you can wreak a lot of havoc and you're in a tank next is six ways six ways to chop choppers i found that choppers especially early on were so annoying so i wanted you to leave here with my favorite ways to chop down choppers starting with the exterminator chop this is our supremo that shoots out rockets which is the best thing i think the only downside is that if another chopper comes quickly or there are two obviously you need to recharge your supremo you can also hook up a emp arrow to your bow and that is real handy of course you're going to have a lot of ammo for that the only problem is that it just disables it so if it doesn't land in water or blow up it may be re-enabled and fired upon you next is using your rocket launcher i prefer the rap 4 because um, it has homing missiles but the problem with this in my opinion is it takes like several of these rockets to take down a helicopter which is actually really frustrating but if you have good cover and i use the mod where you can aim and move pretty quickly which helps me a lot but this is the one i guess that i use pretty regularly because it is effective you have plenty of ammo to do it it is annoying that it takes three shots though the next chop is the blast bullet chop or blast rounds chop 
which you can hook up to a light machine gun and just have at a chopper. It'll take a little longer. It takes a lot of rounds, but if you've got good cover, it can be pretty effective. This is also something you can do very early on, which I think is good. The next way to chop down a chopper is completing the Triad of Blessings story quest and getting the Supremo and weapon that comes with that, which can help you with one-shot kills of chopper pilots, and that's very satisfying. So this is a really good one. Next is the Volta, Ch Volta Chop, which is the EMP Supremo, which is all right. It's just you have to be right up on the chopper to do it. And again, you need your Supremo to recharge. Next, remember is you can upgrade your Amigos if you go hover over your Amigo and press triangle or whatever it is on the PC, then you'll be able to kind of see the different ways you can upgrade your Amigo. My next tip is honestly, I didn't use Amigos too much. Once I got Boom Boom, I was really happy and Elusa too. You can be really stealthy with them. So I like them, but I don't use Amigos a ton. Next is you can change Amigo appearance using that same icon in the lower left hand corner, but only Guapo and Chorizo as far as I know. Now we're moving on to tips to just make you more of a badass and have more style in combat, starting with Death From Above and Death From Below. It's one of the easiest and most stylish ways to have fun with combat, so I really encourage those. You can see a couple examples here, but yeah, using the Furioso Jetpack to um, help with a lot of Death From Above. There aren't a ton of Death From Below opportunities I found, so I try and take them when I can. Next is anytime you have an opportunity to swing and do a death from above. I highly encourage it. It's very fun and satisfying. Next is the sidearm gloves or the machete kill to soldado sidearm. Chain assassination. It's just, again, very satisfying, very fun, but also eliminates multiple enemies at once, which is big. You can also do the same thing with the pin puller gloves. My, like, probably favorite stylistic combat way of doing things is just very satisfying and fun to uh, pull a grenade, uh, kick a soldado, and take out another soldado with it. Now, if you press L3 on PlayStation 5, uh, after a machete kill, you can kind of drag the person around and then aim them at someone for the pin pull. Also very satisfying. You can get two furs in this game if you have good enough velocity and good enough power. Um, so two guys with one bullet. You can also do a two fur with your Amigo where uh, you can tell your Amigo to go get someone and then shoot the person next to them. This move that I really love and use in some of my combat gameplay montages is sweep the leg. This is just sprinting at someone, sliding into them, it sweeps them out from underneath themselves and then you can one shot kill them and it's very fun. Next is pre-aim. So this is a technique I use where I line my crosshairs up close to someone's head. And then when I aim down the sights of the gun, it auto-aims very close to their head. I find I get a lot of headshots this way. So if you get the crosshairs close to their head, aim down the sights, you'll find you get a lot of headshots. Next is still an arrow. This is just, you can distract soldados with arrows so they aren't moving around when you go for the headshot kill with your bow and arrow. It's just like using a baseball. It's really effective. Next is just remember that you can hold R1 to place C4. C4 is really fun in this game, but just remember you can hold R1 and it'll show you where it's gonna go. Next is, yes, C4 is really fun in this game. You can put it on your car and then dive out and blow shit up. You can blow people up straight up or very far from where they're standing. Again, just very fun playing around with C4. My last combat tip for you is just remembering that games are made for playing. So yeah, find that style that you like or play with all the different kinds of guns. Just, yeah, have fun. I think combat typically is the most fun part of a game. So really making sure it kind of feels playful um, and it feels like you can um, have a lot of fun during combat and yeah, not that you're just not going through the motions That's what I don't like and yeah, remember just to get weird like try different combinations of weapons try um, The different resolve air weapons. I think all of that goes a long way in creating more joyful game experience Next is everything about exploring and collecting all my tips for you on that 
number one here is the car plane is effing amazing. I'll just let you sit and watch this. My next tip is the two different ways to add vehicles to your garage. One is you can get it from anywhere in the world and then bring it to another vehicle outpost or vehicle spawn point and it'll get added to your garage. But so will certain aspects of its style. You can see I get rims and a certain color as well as the vehicle. So you can also pull out your camera and scan vehicles to your garage. Um, which is really cool and kind of nice a big time saver So I really recommend anytime you see a vehicle scan it. You can also Scan horses you can see I've already scanned these kinds of horses. I don't know that any horse is better than another Next is Resolver autos. So yeah, just remember all these autos have weapons almost all of them do Next is horseplay. So I really recommend horses if you're going to do anything off-road. I think they're the best off-road quote-unquote vehicle. This clip is actually from my review of Far Cry 6 where um, the addition of horses is just something I've, I've really enjoyed as new to the Far Cry series, particularly because of its ability to off-road. Next is you can summon your car in your weapon wheel straight down. will summon your car, which is also amazing and makes traversing so much better and what's really cool is it will come filled with ammo and every 30 minutes it will refill itself with ammo so when you call it you can get ammo again gadget ammo is hard to find so like refilling up on c4 and grenades and stuff actually is a little few and far between so this is really great the other places to get ammo are fnd turfs and dying Dying will refill your ammo. Okay, cruising along literally. You can avoid artillery by staying low to the flow. So just note that when that artillery beep starts coming on, the lower you get, the better off you'll be. Another great thing to keep in mind is that there's a lot of goodies high up on mountains and on gorilla paths, and choppers are the most effective way to get them. Keeping on moving, I really like the Furioso for traversing. It helps you get to hard to reach places. I always have this on. It's also good enough in combat. You can see an example here of a hard to get place that I could not do without the Furioso. So that jump thrust goes a long way in just trying to get to different places, exploring caves, all of that good stuff. This tip, nobody walks in Yara, is sort of, yeah, the opposite. Parkour gear uh, is pretty great when you have to run around. For whatever reason, I find myself running around a lot in Far Cry, so I really appreciate the parkour gear, which is all about uh, buffs for stamina and speed. So I just really encourage it as if you know you're going to be doing a lot of traversing or if you're like me, um, it can be good to have this. And just keep in mind, you can go into your arsenal and equip whole outfits. So that's particularly nice with this. I'm also pretty sure it's kind of like a side tip. I think you actually swim faster with your parkour gear on. So correct me in the comments, though, if I'm wrong. All right, holstering is another amazing addition to Far Cry 6. I am loving this, which is when you holster your guns, you can just walk by most soldados so long as you're not trespassing around their turf, and they won't bat an eye. Maybe they'll be suspicious. I'm finding later in the game it happens more often, but unless you pull a gun, they're not going to be suspicious, and that's just been really great. You can holster a gun by going all the way right on your weapon wheel. Next is I saw the sign. So... When on Gorilla Pass, you'll see signs. I never use these. It's not that helpful. I just want you to know about them. But red means uh, FNDs are around and blue means uh, good stuff is around. So generally blue is good. You'll see these blue flowers on your Gorilla Paths and just keep in mind that's good. Also, you may find yourself flying around, looking around and seeing those flashes like you just saw on the screen. I used to think they were only snipers, but they're actually where workbenches are and often where there are workbenches, there are goodies. Tip and trick number one gajillion is you can slow down and speed up on zip lines. Slowing down can be really, really great for taking your pistol out and shooting soldados. 
one gajillion and one is you can slide really far down hills i know this is well documented but i think it's an amazing way to escape or get out of a tight spot you can also pull very very late the rip cord on uh wing suits and free falling so just remember that the best way to get around i think this is often what people want is honestly and this may feel a little bit like a cop out is whatever is most convenient i think the wingsuit is my preferred way but if you have a helicopter right there get in it if you're on the road call your car and drive around in that like again this map is to be explored so even if you could teleport all over the place it kind of defeats the purpose i mean I think we'd all just traverse in the wing plane if we could all the time, but just know that, you know, you can hijack a car, you can just, I, I just sort of found that being creative and having fun with traversing was better than finding the best way. Moving up and moving on. Anytime you see a lighthouse in Yara, it's probably got something really good, a gun or some gunpowder, just something really goody goody that you're gonna want is typically at a lighthouse. Know that supply trucks have supplies. Anytime you take one down or see a down one, you can get supplies out of the back. Uh, remember to liberate people. It can add locations to your locations of all kinds of goodies. It can also add banditos to your Los Banditos mission. So definitely liberate folks out of trucks and when you see them on the side of the road and whatnot. Remember that there are great ways to get intel. It's so nice not having to buy maps and stuff. Just talking to people will show you where so much is. That includes getting intel from any of the places you liberate as well as your camps. You'll also see some folks on Gorilla Paths who have that exclamation point above their head and you can get intel from them. You can also pay for it. Uh, some soldados will take a small bribe in pesos to give you some more intel, locations, all kinds of good stuff. Okay, so based on experience. So just remember that when you clear out a base, you there is good stuff there. I have forgotten uranium before i've forgotten fnd boxes so just don't forget when you clear out a place to really clear it out find those fnd boxes you'll get great guns gunpowder is like kind of hard to come by so again just don't forget when you clear out a base to really get all of the goodies um, talk to the person giving you intel just see it through to the end Next, like I said, gunpowder is hard to come by. You can't really farm it, but I do want you to know where it all is or the best places to find it. One is uh, FND caches in restricted areas. Also supply drops have gunpowder and banditos missions can sometimes supply you with gunpowder. Plenty to collect. So you have all of these things you can collect. I haven't done a good job, but I'm looking forward to sweeping all of that stuff up later on. I just wanted to remind you that these are out there and just keep on the lookout because sometimes they're very small, including the USBs. Those are like very, very small and there's so much good stuff to read. I just encourage you to do it. So here are some of the USBs. You can go in here and actually listen to the song too. I read somewhere on Reddit that when you flick around your radio stations while you're in a car, you can actually listen to the music that you've gotten through USB sticks. I mean, it says USB song right there, but I haven't been able to do that. Maybe I don't have enough USB sticks. So go ahead and put in the comments if you know what's going on with this and if you can listen to USB songs. Remember that as far as this section goes, that adventure is the ultimate tip. It's a beautiful map. Um, and a, a fun game, so exploring and searching around and just uh, keeping the spirit of adventure going all the time I think is the best tip I can give you for this section. Our next section is all about customizing our rides and I wanted to include this because I think there's some stuff here that um, once you dig under it a little bit you find out a lot more. So I want to start with the different places you can get each car. So Wands Beaumont you get through the story. To get the Takai Subaru you have to go to Catalina Ridge. Uh, Yami's Hummer you get through the story of Backseat Driver and the last one there you just have to finish any race on the map and you'll get that one. So to get that Sabuku, you just need to go again to Catalina Ridge, which is located here on your map. So feel free to pause. 
and locate that. Next, I want to go over the differences of each one, which are pretty intuitive. Juan's Beaumont Valentina is just kind of a good-looking car. Doesn't handle great. Doesn't seem to have any bonuses around armor or anything like that. Takai's Sabuku seems to be a little better for off-roading. And then the Humvee, y Yami's Humvee, really seems to take a lot more bullets and be okay. It's good as a battering ram, too. Um, even without one, so that's what my sense of that one is, and of course Verrazano's is um, very fast and handles really well. So those are the differences, but there's no place that tells you the differences or their different stats or anything like that. If I'm wrong though, and you found something like that, please hit me up in the comments. So in the pause menu, you can change your ride, you can pick a different ride each time, you can actually change which turret guns you want. Um, so there's some customizing stuff you can do just any time, which is nice because it's sort of like loading out different guns um, or, you know, kind of tricking your car out at any time while you're running around. But at the workbench, at any workbench, you can go and that's when you upgrade your car. So once you're in a workbench, you can see, like, you can go and buy a new turret gun or upgrade all of your turret guns you can upgrade your armor those are all the things you can do at the workbench another quick tip is you probably know you can spawn your car but actually if you blow your car up you can just respawn it again over and over i haven't noticed any time that really needs to elapse from destroying your ride and being able to respawn your ride so that's cool and the primary material for upgrading your car is vehicle scraps, which can be found. Anytime you blow up a vehicle, you'll notice it kind of blinking a little bit, and so that's how you get vehicle scraps. Next is upgrades and different upgrades you can do. Again, which you've got to do at the workbench, but I wanted to start with turret guns. So your mounted turrets are a lot like your bullets for guns. You can do soft target blasting rounds whatever so um i've done blasting rounds because mostly i'm doing vehicle on vehicle stuff next is the best offense is a, a good defense so i've mostly just used the pie caliente or the grenades that come out of your exhaust uh, as part of my defense so i encourage the use of that next is use protection so just make sure you're upgrading your armor that's huge for the Ver verrazano which is what i use most of the time um because it's a weak little thing but real quick next is mount up so this has been my favorite upgrade i use that giant plow i've upgraded it all the way and it's wonderful next cosmetics is and you can upgrade or change this anytime rather um, not upgrade it but anytime you can change out your rims you can change out the color of your car though at least in the verrazano the colors don't look that different um, but anyway you can do all of those cosmetic things as well my favorite build out so again i really like the explosive rounds that i've upgraded all of the way uh, i find that that's really good because you can take out other vehicles pretty quickly and that in combination with the plow, which I'll go over in a second, is pretty is pretty good. Next is, like I said, I like the Pi Caliente uh, as defense in case I'm getting chased, which honestly happens very rarely. Then my go-to protective plating is the one that prevents impact damage. Great. And then this uh, El Mascarone is actually quite comical. Anytime you run into another car, you're going to like flip it. It really prevents damage from happening to your car. If you hit a person, they're going to fly. It's, it's hilarious and amazing. I really encourage getting this and upgrading it all the way. That's my build out, but I use the Verrazano because it's so effing fast. It handles so great. And with a good plow and good armor, it does a great job. All right, let's get going with construction and camp build out because I think doing this the right way can have a big impact and save you time. My first tip really has to do with just reminding you that you want to harvest gasoline and metal to upgrade and that there were times where I ran out of gasoline. So just make sure to be on the lookout for those materials and then don't forget to upgrade. So after you build each building, you can upgrade it two or three times. And so just keep that in mind because all the upgrades come with specific perks, which I'm going to go over each of those now. So the thing that I think has the biggest impact is the hideout network, and I would encourage you to build this first, mostly because it helps you get around. 
Uh, and if you're someone like me who likes to explore, but also goes back and forth quite a bit, I really encourage the hideout network early and upgrading it early. It gets you your wingsuit, which is huge. It also gets you airdrops for fast travel. It will bump how many fast travel points you have. It will bump how many camp locations you find, including like hideouts. It will, as you upgrade, you'll notice that there's guerrilla intel or people at your camp that will give you guerrilla intel and that each time you go to your camp you'll find that there are supplies there and there's a car there and that stuff comes with some upgrades so hideout network is the first one to build in my opinion so the hideout network is the next best one in my opinion and i'll go over the specific reason for that in a second but essentially luck cantina is where you bring some of the animal meat that you have and you create uh there are recipes that you can get and those recipes lead to buffs things that help you sneak around better and be more stealthy things that help you um, carry more gadgets so the more you upgrade it the more recipes you get those recipes can offer some amazing buffs really good ones and the reason low cantina is second the second best i think is because i haven't found and i haven't found anywhere on the internet that can tell me that these buffs don't last the whole time that might be a glitch uh, that gets ironed out but i think the buffs last very long but even if they don't once you fully upgrade the buffs last for six hours so they're not really stingy with how long the buffs last so that's why i think this is great the ones i really encourage are ninja nachos and sneaky schnitzel because those keep you real stealthy and prevent you from getting seen as quickly and then the gadgeteer gyoza because it helps lets you carry way more c4 or emp grenades etc so i really like la cantina i don't think it gets the love it deserves the next one which i didn't use a ton but i think can be good if you don't do a lot of exploring is the banditos barracks because you can buy gear that you'd otherwise find around the map so that's a real bonus to this one of course the more you upgrade the better gear you can buy it also means that you can when you do an activity where you would get recruits or recruit people into libertad that you'll get more of them each time so when you liberate someone from a um, a prison van or a, a prison truck or when you liberate someone who's just kind of being held at gunpoint or whatever then you'll get more Guerrilla or Libertad recruits each time. It also means that during Los Bandidos missions, you'll have a higher chance of success. And those, particularly later in the game, I really actually did a lot more of because, and it was great to have a higher percentage of success because I needed gunpowder. I was just on the hunt for gunpowder, and Los Bandidos helped with that sometimes. Um, it also means that when you complete Spec Ops, you'll get recruits and the more upgrades you do, um, the more recruits you'll get from Spec Ops. So that's Bandidos Barracks. It's my third favorite or third most important one. So what the barracks is to gear, the Guerrilla Garrison is for weapons. So this is where you can buy weapons you'd otherwise find on the map. All of the gear and weapons you can buy from the barracks and garrison, my understanding is that you can find on the map. So if you do explore more, these just aren't as important for that particular reason. But it can be nice in the barracks to like round out a full outfit or if there's a weapon you're just feeling like you really need here at the garrison, you can buy it with pesos. That's the currency that gets you the gear and the weapons. So yep, yeah, this is the Guerrilla Garrison. Um, it also means that throughout the map, while you're doing um, different activities out on the map, you'll get guerrilla support. And the more you upgrade the garrison, the better the, the better the guerrillas are in terms of their weapons and abilities. It also will get you a recon laptop, which I covered in the scouting portion. But essentially, when you come up on a uh, FND or military location, you'll see a little icon for a laptop and when you go to the laptop it will scout out things like uh, early on before you upgrade it it'll scout cameras uh, and alarms and then the more you upgrade it you'll end up actually seeing uh, soldados so uh, pretty cool I like the recon laptop as a scouting measure and then yeah when you it uh, upgrade your garrison each time it will advance all three so you'll get better weapons better guerrilla support and the recon laptop will do more for you the hunter's lodge and fishing hut are the last two that i recommend 
With the Hunter's Lodge, you will be able to buy maps for hunting locations. You'll be able to get hunting gear, including what is finding some mythical animals out on the map. And then when you kill them, you can bring their pelts uh, to the Hunter's Lodge, and that will get you primal gear, which is better hunting gear. So know that. Uh, each time you upgrade the Hunter's Lodge, you'll get a weapon. I think it's a bow each time. Uh, so that can be kind of cool if you haven't bought or found a bow that you know you can just upgrade your Hunter's Lodge. Um, as you upgrade too, you'll be able to recover more arrows from uh, using arrows. You'll have better harvesting of the animals that you kill. And it'll get to a point where you can hunt with different kinds of weapons without damaging them. So you aren't always having to use a bow. Though certainly that's what I recommend. So that's the Hunter's Lodge. The more you upgrade, upgrade the better the gear, the better the equipment, the more harvesting, etc. All right, last and probably least is the Fishing Hut. So the Fishing Hut will give you the ability to buy maps and find fishing locations. It will help you get fishing gear. Uh, so that's outfits that, that help you fish. Also, it will make it so when you upgrade, you can attract some fish with bait. I haven't figured this out. I've definitely like tried to chum up the waters with throwing bait in there, which is bait you can get from one of your Supremo um, gadget build out is like the bait that attracts um, predators. That's what I've been trying. But if you know anything more about this, if you've been able to attract some fish with bait, let me know. The best part about this that I found and the upgrade worth going after is where when you fully upgrade the fishing hut, you can actually fish with bullets and arrows and explosives. And fishing with C4 is actually pretty effective. So that's the fishing hut. And here we are at my hunting and fishing tutorial or tips, tricks, and things you might have missed where I'm going to go over the different aspects that have helped me be a better hunter and fisher in Far Cry 6. So number one, we're starting with hunting and it's important to gear up. So there are, there are, there is some gear that are trapper, that the trapper gear, which is really helpful. And you can see some of that here. So I would definitely encourage you to get the trapper gear, which you can find um, throughout the map. And there are plenty of videos to help you find the trapper gear. So definitely put that on. That's the first step. And then the next step is I typically bring Boom Boom with me because Boom Boom can do some scouting of animals as you upgrade him. So I think the second upgrade uh, or one of the upgrades gives you the him the ability to find enemies, but that includes... Um, animals out in the wild so bring boom boom with you and then next is remember that there are some buffs in la cantina that will help you be a better hunter as well you can see scuba um, the scuba one and the hunter's hot dog those are both buffs that will help you hunt and fish next you want to scout with your camera so when you come up on the hunting grounds you just want to take out your camera to try and find where the animals are that's huge and again you want to sort of sneak up another way you can scout is you can scout with boom you can see there boom finds a couple of deer that i go chase a little later and my preferred way to hunt is with a bow and kind of stalking prey so i think that's the best way to do it if you can get a bow uh, if you can get an arrow and headshot and not freak out your uh, prey, then that will go a long way. That's the best way to do it, especially before you can upgrade to where uh, bullets don't do as much damage to the animal meat. So next, just want to make sure we go over mythical animals throughout the map. There are some mythical animal animals out there that you can kill and use their pelts to get primal hunting gear. So once you uh, kill one of these mythical animals in the tradable section, you'll be able to see them there and then you just have to go to the hunter's lodge to start trading that in for the primal gear which is like the best hunting gear all right just let's do some quick trading basics the only thing i want to highlight here in terms of a tip is that it's broken out by what material you get for trading that particular meat in so i just thought that was kind of cool and thought you should know about that also my tip for you is always to keep one animal on tap. I try not to trade everything in. One, because I just haven't found that you really need to in Far Cry 6 because there's so much you can pick up, but also in case a mission comes up where you need that meat for whatever reason. Now, as you're carrying around this truckload of meat with you, you want to do something with it. So just remember, you can cook at La Cantina when you build that at any one of your main camps, but also 
throughout the map you have hideouts and at each hideout this took me a while to figure out because there's no icon for it um there are little like pots you can cook in so you can see i'm going to go to one of these hideouts and in the hideout if you sort of look around you'll see this pot um, that has a little icon over it and you can cook in that which is great because that will get you those buffs that you really need to hunt and fish better the other big thing with hunting and fishing is to make sure you're upgrading your fishing hut and your hunting lodge those doing this will just help you with better equipment it will help you make sure that you're using the fish better you're able to hunt uh, and do damage with bullets um, and explosives and it it will allow you to still collect meat you collect more meat so just keeping in mind that upgrading your fishing hut and your hunting lodge is also a good tip to be a better fisher and hunter or at least a more efficient one so let's move on to fishing where we start in the same place which is gear up there is an angler's outfit that you can collect throughout the map and so getting that will help you a lot to i mean this is probably one of the biggest things to make it easier to catch fish is put this outfit on next i want to go over everything tackle box related so at every major fishing place which is there's a fishing icon on your map there's a tackle box and this is where you know this is essentially your workbench so here you can change your rod um, and what your rod looks like and you can use spray cans to change the way your rod looks you can also equip a a little trinket so or a charm rather so next and this is the biggest one is you need to make sure or one thing you that's really helpful is making sure your lure matches the fish you're trying to catch so you can see there that that's an evasive fish so you want to look for the lure that helps you with fish that are fast or evasive that one's deep water so you need to use the sort of condom resolve air solution they have for deep water fishes again that snook one is evasive so you just want your lures to really match the different fish out there the parrot fish has high speed so let's look at some lures so you can kind of get a sense of this this first lure is the condom so that will help you get to deep water fish out there the next one is increasing reeling speed which i think helps with high speed fish the alluring lure is for hard to catch fish i also think it's good in general and then this re uh, reduces fish speed which is good for evasive fish so that's matching the lures with the uh, type of fish which is really good the next tip i have for you which is when you're fishing if you're able to just cast down the the beach line or the coastline there and then when you catch a fish, instead of having to reel it in, you can just go run up to it um, because there's a, a little bit of distance between you and the fish where you'll still be able to do that last reel in animation. So that helped me a lot, made fishing a lot easier. Next is as you upgrade your fishing hut, you'll be able to um, fish with arrows, even with C4. And I found arrows were particularly good for some of those predator fish. Also, guapo can sometimes kill those predator fish for you. Um, and then, yeah, fish in a barrel, my friend. C4 is really effective at times for fishing, too. Oh, my God, we did it. That's my Far Cry 6 things, uh, tricks, tips, tricks, things you might have missed. Uh, that was exhausting, but also very fun. I hope you were able to jump around and get whatever you needed, or maybe you watched it in full and got some new tips. Put any other tips I might have missed on the comments because I'm curious about how what y'all are learning. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This was fun. Thanks, y'all. Take care. Free elections, free expression, free the outcast. <laughs> when tyranny is law, revolution is order. What's up, Libertad? I hope you loved that video. I loved making it. Don't forget that as soon as I start making money from YouTube, I'm going to donate 50% of what I make to charities of my subscribers' choice. So subscribe here, like the video, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Midnight Lights. It's spelled a little different, as you know. Thanks, and see you next time.